out shame working for the meeting no more I'm thinking we could find an old dirt road that we ain't never driven before and even if we got nothing to do we might as well go out tonight catch a little bit of moonlight baby rev that engine just right cause you're my Hello, it's Chuck from Above the Basement, Boston Music and Conversation. We had heard of Jimmy Connor over the past year through the grapevine. Rumors of a young musician with guitar chops making a name for himself while only just graduating from high school. We decided to find out for ourselves what all the hubbub was about. We met Jimmy at Orange Door Kitchen in Acton, Massachusetts, which is a really beautiful new multi-use kitchen space for food startups, event hosting, and co-working space all in one. It's definitely worth checking out at orangedoorkitchen.com. Anyways, as you just heard and will soon hear live at the end of this episode, Boston native Jimmy Connor is a talent. He now lives in Nashville and just released his first EP called It's about time. We talked about his roots, his ambitions, the challenge of making the grade in high school while at the same time starting a professional career in music, and his aspirations that include but are not limited to his own tour bus. So here is our conversation with Jimmy Connor, recorded at Orange Door Kitchen in Acton, Massachusetts. out when I saw Leland Sklar on the list, dude. Ah, and, uh, you, you know, know what? what? Do you know who Leland Sklar is? You, oh my god, you, are you kidding me? Dude, let me shake your hand. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> you like Leland Sklar. Oh man, are you kidding me? You, you know who he He's is. He's a I hero. <laughs> he is awesome. And you know, I, I was uh, I was just listening to you on the way here, actually. Um, I caught a, a little bit of uh, your interview with, who are the, the not bluegrass, not Americana dudes? Oh, um, Crow Medicine Show. Yeah, yeah. I've seen them play the Opry, like several yeah. times. Oh, really? They're amazing. Yeah. yeah. They're you know, so good. The funny, the funny thing is about that, about that is we were the first people to talk to them with their new, uh, they had a new member. Ron, did you know this? What? Old Crow. We were the first people to talk to them with their new member. And take a picture of the new member too. <laughs> yeah, and take a picture really? of the new member. Yeah. Dude, there's some monster players. All of them are great. You saw them at the Berkeley. They did their master class. I saw their master class there, and then we saw them that night. That's yeah. amazing. But uh, yeah, so Nashville, uh, we're here with Jimmy Connor. Yes, sir. Give me five, man. I love the fact. I love the fact that you That's know. That's like Leland the ninth Sklar. high five you oh, given him. Are you kidding me? That was his left hand. I just now it's That's equaled the out. That's the first time. Oh, okay. We'll start. I like high five and Jimmy. You. <laughs> Here, Chuck. So, Here, here's a high five. <laughs> so wait a minute. I'm still interested. In, I don't want to high five you. I'm still interested. In, how do you know Leland Sklar? I'm interested. So in that. Leland uh, James Taylor. Well, he played for James. Right. My first introduction was either listening or seeing video footage of him playing with James and my dad's like the biggest James Taylor fan and yeah I grew up I mean listening to all the James Taylor records yeah. and uh, Livingston Taylor too but, but yeah. you know the name Chris. absolutely we went to London to talk to Leland that's we, so cool and we thought about doing a documentary Ron had this great idea we do a documentary called "Who Is Leland Sklar?" Yeah, yeah. Because we went around asking or, or people, searching for Leland searching Sklar, for like a, something yeah. like that's that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. and because no one knows his name, but yeah. if you meant, if you describe them, they're like, "Oh yeah, I totally know him." Yeah. yeah. So I'm, the I'm impressed. Know him, the musicians so. know him. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's, definitely. So yeah, he's good. a legend. I love. There's he's, nothing. He's the like greatest guy playing. you'll yeah. ever meet too. Oh, I believe it. I didn't get to listen to your or see what you guys did with him, but oh no, check it out. Yeah, we went to his hotel to talk to him. Because yeah. The day after we saw him on the stage with Phil Collins. Leland's big thing is really about songs. He's with some of the best songwriters of our time, but it's not just because he's a great bass player, which I never realized yeah. until I learned more about him and talked to him, Definitely. is that it's about his interpretation of the bass line in that song. And he's yeah. he's there to help tell the song story. This blew my mind. So yeah. I, it was well, great. that's how you know a good bass player, man. <laughs> that's how you know a yeah. good musician is when they do that, and that's why he's who he is. And speaking of that, so that. You're, you're down in Nashville. Yeah. 
and you're with these studio cats in Nashville. Tell us a little bit more about how you made it down there. Is this something you've been thinking about for a while? Or? <clears throat> yeah, it's a it's a bit of a longer story than it sort of seems. So I I've known Nashville since I was really little because everybody that I looked up to in the country scene is from Nashville or not from that but lives in Nashville and tours from Nashville and I started going my first trip to Nashville was like the end of 2013 and I started going there I mean I had sort of started develop me meetings and sort of people that I needed to be with like once a month so I would go down like for the last five years so I've been in Nashville a lot I really knew that I needed to end up in Nashville and um, I was like so ready uh, I graduated high school early uh, this past January, and I had my apartment all settled, uh, moved in March 8th, which was crazy, and uh, huh. so it's been really quick since then. And You got your own apartment down in Nashville? I do, God yeah. damn it. <laughs> He's not going to even let you stay there. Don't. Dude, I, Chuck's thinking you of your trash. couch right now. It's comfy. It's leather, and it's comfy. Well, that's, that's awesome, dude. So... <laughs> I have, to, I have to confess, I've never been to Nashville. You gotta come hang I out. Know. You love it. I know. So I've it's heard. A fun place, man. Five years you've been doing. Yes, sir. You don't have to call, so sir. So five years. <laughs> As a matter no. of fact, I, I recommend. We'll you work. Call. We'll see how the interview goes. We'll see. <laughs> five years. I think it makes me twelve at the time. Yeah, I was twelve or thirteen. Um, what what started that? You or your or your mom or like? How did you know about Nashville? You know, the big, like, CMA Fest is, like, the biggest country music festival, which, we, <laughs> crazy enough, just got to play this past year, two shows there, which was nuts. <laughs> um, but I had heard about it for forever. It was, like, this whole week of, like, magical country music. Like, everyone is in town. Everyone is playing shows at the same time when you just get to run around and watch all of the best shows in country music. That was in Nashville because that's home for everybody. Um, and so I was in a competition, actually, when I was, like, 12. Long story short, my mom saw this ad in the paper that was like, hey, you know, this is this thing called the New England Country Music Organization, and yeah. you can go compete for, like, a title and just go play a couple songs, and, like, they'll name you for your age range, like, the best, you know, new country male vocalist or, like, entertainer or instrumentalist, and I actually won all three of those categories the first yeah. year, <laughs> um, which is the stupidest thing in the world, and That's so awesome. I got to go down and compete nationally, actually, technically, it was an international thing, um, in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, which is, like, two hours from Nashville, so we were yeah, like, Pigeon all right, Forge. I've been yeah. there actually. Well, so like Dollywood is down there. Yeah, Dollywood. And, yeah. yeah. And Gatlinburg. Yeah, Gatlinburg yeah. with the alpine slides and stuff. Dude, yeah, man. It's so yeah. much fun. So the yeah. first time I ever went to Nashville, my mom was like, all right, you know, we're, we're all going. My grandparents came too because they were so excited. And we were like, all right, we're going to go to Nashville. We're going to spend the weekend in Nashville. And then when the competition starts, we'll just drive from Nashville to Pigeon Forge. And Pigeon so that Forge was my is where time. Dolly Parton's from, by the way. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. It's a weird town. It's I've crazy. heard Dollywood is pretty amazing. Dude, it's crazy. Greatest ro roller coasters. I, we only got to go in for a couple hours, so I didn't get to do a lot of stuff, but we saw all the old wooden roller coasters and stuff, and yeah. it's like, it's crazy. Dolly Parton a lot of music. Is, yeah. is a queen. Yeah, she's, she's cool. She's freaking awesome. Amazing yeah. songwriter, too. Amazing yeah. songwriter. I mean, she's just she's a triple threat. Oh, yeah, all day. Maybe not. I don't know if she can dance or not, but yeah. she doesn't get nearly enough credit, at least up here, maybe, mm. that, she, that she deserves. So you yeah. were saying that you got some awards. It had to be some kind of validation that f what you were doing, no matter what age, but let alone someone who's coming of age. But what yeah. was it like for you when you first got those awards? I mean, it didn't feel like as big of a deal, I guess, as it turned out to be for me, because those awards, in turn went on my my one sheet right in my like thing that we send to venues and we, that we send to festivals and you know booking agents and all this stuff and so to so to back up to even before that when you eventually threw in your audition tape to yeah. to get there this is what you wanted to do at a young age yeah. to to start playing for people and you'd already been playing mm -hmm. up here in boston yeah so I started playing guitar when I was five or six, and then my dad was a is a guitar player, and he was on the road for a year um, with a group called Up with People, which was basically I know Up you with know people. people. I saw Up with People. They came up here, and I saw Dude. them Up Up with People. Nah, you nah, meet them nah, wherever, wherever you, you go. go. They're up, the best kind of up folks with I know. People. Yep. They're the best kind of folks, you know. If more people were four people, all <laughs> yeah, people. I, we everywhere. had the album and everything. Yeah. Gary so he, he was that's a tour. He was you a know that Gary and Laura are up with people a Yes, I do. They were, that's right. I forgot people about People we sang with. Really? They were the yeah. people. That's too. awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. So, yeah. So straight out of high school, he took a, <laughs> yeah, he took a year, and they toured Europe, the whole U.S., Europe, 
Canada and Mexico, they were everywhere for so, years. So your dad was, he was a performer. He was a touring guitar player for touring guitar player for yeah. them. Yeah. Um, and he's a singer too. So at, from a very young age, like, I just want to do that. I just want to learn how to play guitar. And so I started taking, I took a couple guitar lessons, didn't really click with anybody until I met Dan at Acton Music. And so I took lessons for about a year with him. And then I was like, okay, I got it. And I just started playing guitar all the time. Something clicked with you. Yeah. For what sure. was that? What was that feeling? When I realized that I think what I was hearing in my head, I could finally translate. You're an ear player? You can, All day. You, can you read? Uh, I can read. I don't. I, I Nashville is like the number charts thing. Yeah. So with the Nashville number system, I chart and all that stuff. So you can do you can do that pretty well. Yeah. Something happened at eight where you heard it and you can say this is in my it's in my ear. Yeah. And you started writing. Yeah, probably age eleven. I started, I, I don't know if you call it writing songs, but I started writing songs, <laughs> like just terrible, cliche, horrible things. But the That's feeling how you start. of, yeah, the feeling of just being able to like what I have in my, in my brain or whatever is like happening right now, I can sort of like get it out. You know, I'll never forget the first time I actually completed an entire song. Yeah. It was terrible. Oh, But I was so terrible. proud that I had a, a beginning, middle and end mm -hmm. and had lyrics and a bridge, yep. and I was like, this is a song. I could go up there and play this in front of people. It was Dude. like a real, I did this like a couple months ago, I think. And um, <laughs> But I was able to check that off my, my bucket list. No, I'm kidding. It was a little longer than that. Yeah. <laughs> but do you remember that moment when you finished your first song? I do. Um, it was horrible, um, but I do remember it. And I don't think I played that song for anybody. What was I it called? Dude, I don't know. Yeah. I don't even remember. I'll have to, I'll get back to you on that. I'll go look it up when I get home. Right. I remember the first song that I ever played for people, I... Um, was after Hunter Hayes pulled me up on stage the first time I was 14. He like shouted me out on his YouTube channel and was like, this kid, you know, whatever, and <laughs> put video from him pulling me up on stage singing wow. one of his tunes. And everybody followed, like so many people followed me on Instagram. They were like, you need to like release original music. And I had this one song. Instagram, you mentioned, to what extent did social media, or has social media affected your growth? I love this question and I hate it because I, I get it. And every time I get it, I sort of don't know how to... I, there's a different answer every time because I think it's it can be such a positive thing and it can be such a negative thing. Sometimes. Well, let me create it. So let me yeah. rephrase it because I didn't do it justice. So let's say it didn't exist. Would it be different? Definitely. I think I wouldn't have had the motivation sort of to be able to clarify to myself and to the world like, okay, this is what I'm doing now. Like there was a, a moment really right after Hunter pulled me up for the first time on stage in 2014 that my Instagram became a business Instagram. Like it became... This is all music stuff. And even if it was terrible at the time, this is all music stuff. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. After that, I was like, I saw this opportunity and I was like, okay, now that there are people looking, I have to do stuff. I have to be playing shows. I have to be looking like I'm doing stuff. And had there not been an Instagram and, you know, a uh, public record of what happened, I don't know if, if I would have had to do that or I wouldn't have had to do that. So it might have been different. I don't know. Well, it certainly yeah. changes the equation. You, once you get people following you, they expect content. Back in the day, what we would have had to have done yeah. is just gig our asses off. Just yeah. gig as much as we can and somehow... And maybe we, make a tape. Make a, a cassette tape. tape. Yeah. Make a tape, hand those out physically, hand them out, yeah. and, and hopefully get on the radio. Yeah. On, well, I mean, I think that's sim still a similar vibe. It is. But yeah. you can get something go viral. I, so that first video, um, Hunter, so Hunter did this thing for a while and he had this video series every Monday. They posted this thing called For the Love of Music Monday. And they had this thing and it was like four minutes of just like road shenanigans or studio shenanigans or whatever it was that he was doing so that the fans could kind of have a little bit of a sneak peek into his life, his into life, what yeah. he's doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think it's genius. The first, I think it's the first time someone said shenanigans on this episode. Oh, yeah. I'm honored. Yeah. Um, so he posted um, a video of them pulling me up on stage, physically pulling me up on stage from the crowd yeah. uh, and singing um, I Want Crazy. And, you know, they, at the time, like, he was getting, like, a lot, thousands and tens of thousands of views on these things. So I said my full name, which I, I was freaking out at the moment, um, but uh -huh. I, I remembered to say my full name, and people <laughs> followed me. So I would say that that there was a picture that I posted and um, that video were the closest thing I've had to a viral. How often were you gigging at that time? Before that happened, I was probably playing 20 or 30 shows a year. Farmer's markets, small restaurants, Just stuff you. like that. Just me, acoustic guitar. And that went on my resume and they'd see the resume and be like, oh my God, that's that kid. Uh, at the time, it was really great because we could go to venues and fairs and festivals and booking agents and, and just be like, yeah this is who I am and they'd be like okay you can play here so from that moment on 
it was like 100 shows a year and it's been 100 to 150 shows a year since then you know just how to flip your hair like that and crack that smile i can't resist and you know you've got me going 20 kinds of crazy for that wild cherry on your lips you know what Just makes me fall in love with So when did the switch happen when you started playing with with a full band and going to electric and all that? First time I got to play with a band was actually shortly after the Hunter show. We had a big opportunity in, in Boston, and they were like, "You can come play, but you got to have a band." So I was like, "Okay." I knew some musicians, and where, did you, where was it in Boston? You Loretta's Last Call. Oh yeah, yeah, right by Fenway. Um, they were doing a big night, and they were like, "You should come in." You know, we're having a bunch of artists come in and, and do their things, and uh, you got to have a band though. So I was like, "Okay." So I got a band together. I, we played like five songs, uh, like half an hour set, whatever, six songs. Yeah, so I put that together, um, and then by the end of twenty four, like December twenty fourteen or January twenty fifteen, I was touring with a band. Um, and that was a quick transition and, um, we weren't super tight at first, but it's like anything you gotta <laughs> figure it out. You and, get tight quick when you start touring. Oh right? yeah. When and a lot of shows around. a year did that. And so we got pretty tight and those guys are awesome. And then actually I just got, um, some new guys. We had, uh, auditions and, um, I had to unfortunately make the switch to professional guys who could, you know, my old guys had families and careers yeah, and they had to stay my and new guys. They had responsibilities yeah. and they had to stay. So, yeah. so when you say you went on tour, what does that mean? Um, so at 14, I mean, it was sleeping at home for sure. Um, and, and not a whole lot of hotels and stuff, but it was just a lot of, um, you know, around New England shows. And, so the East and Coast kind of thing? East you, Coast, you got yeah. You got in New York at all? And, yeah, pretty and much Northeast. Northeast. Um, and re- I say mostly New England, especially 2014, 2015, 2016, mostly New England. Yeah. And then we started doing Northeast and then we started sort of getting bigger and now we're getting sort of moving out into the Midwest, which is really exciting and just That's doing great. a lot of stuff. I don't know if we've how, announced anything. How did you do your high school? Did you have to do that? You did homeschool or something like that? Or no, what did I went do? to AB, uh, public high yeah? school. Yeah. Uh, they let That's me graduate. Uh, yeah. It's a rhetorical um, question. I knew the answer. Yeah. But yeah. I was, I was asking. <laughs> it's not rhetorical. Well, it could have been. I, I just answered it. I ruined the re- yeah. rhetorical. It was re- rhetoric ish. <laughs> it was rhetoric ish. It was rhetoric ish. I like that. <laughs> but yeah, so they, I was like, I really want to graduate from this high school, but I can't if you don't work I taught with there. me. Did you really? I did as a substitute teacher there. No way. Yeah. When? Was I a little, like one I day? Were, I was I like a brat and ago. that's why you quit? I don't think you were born yet, as a matter of fact. It was a long time ago. I'm not <laughs> so even kidding. I don't funny. think you were born. Wait, um, before you get to AB, which yeah, I want to talk okay. about in our town and everything, which is very exciting. Definitely. So you were you were talking to Chuck about touring. Uh, the New England is so unique because awesome. you can actually drive three hours and be in a whole different community. Were you doing like a 45-minute set somewhere? Were you doing... Like openers, were you he- headlining it? Yeah, late at night until like midnight. Like, how did that work with your yeah. situation as a fifteen, sixteen year old? So yes, to all yeah, of the above. Yes, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We did everything. So we'd play thirty minute sets at. I mean, we didn't do a ton of those, but we do like if we did a thirty minute set, we'd do like an opener or a pre opener for like a, a national artist, which was great. And then we do a ton of like two, three, three and a half, four hour cover band shows, which paid the bills, uh, paid for my gear addiction, which was awesome. I mean, we did everything. We'd, we'd go co-headline with bands or headline yeah. um, in markets that we could sort of stand out in and, and, and could make money in headlining, which is great. Um, and that sort of didn't come until, uh, you know, the, the last couple years. And lately we have been um, doing a lot of sort of headlining stuff, uh, which is really great. We've been doing a lot of opening stuff the last couple of years, which is awesome. So, yeah, it's been it's been really busy and really good. But the concept of touring has changed a lot yeah. over the years because now there's a lot of away from home, a 
lot of hotels, a lot of long drives and time actually out instead of, you know, okay, let's go play show and then come home and, you right. know, get home at three right. in the morning and then get up to go to school and then go to another you show the next night. get up to go to school, right. Yeah. Which is not exactly not healthy. 10 in the morning. I mean, Terrible. You be there at seven. Plus yeah. you got to study, you got exams, yeah. you yeah. got... Yeah, so there's a lot of questions about this. So I did, you started touring a lot in your yeah. junior year? Freshman year was really when we started picking up to 100 shows a year. Um, which Freshman was crazy. year at AB. Yeah. Sophomore year was the craziest, for sure. That was 150 shows a year, and all of them were long shows, very late at night, very far away from home. And it was a lot of... How did you go to classes? Home. Like, Or did you have to make them... Like, were they the teachers good with you to no. make up? So- no, yeah. no, they were the worst. Because um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, really? I mean, no, they weren't the worst. It's they a good were, shout they out were, to AB right no, now. No, <laughs> no, no. I had some great teachers. I had um, a couple, a couple of awesome teachers. I, I honestly, I, I say, I say they were the worst. The administration was was not cooperative sophomore year. My teachers were understanding for the most part, which was really, really helpful. So they didn't cut any couple, breaks, really, though. No. Once I think we started picking up social numbers and we started doing bigger stuff and, and the word got back to AB. Junior year and, and uh, senior year, my guidance counselor actually was unbelievable for me. Um, and she helped get me classes like to have first period free. So I that would keep That's me kind from of getting a up. At, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would keep me from getting up at five thirty in the morning to, right. you know, six thirty in the morning, which is huge. I still took a lot of classes junior year, um, because I wasn't sure about the college situation. I needed the GPA, so I was like, Okay, I'm gonna just drop down levels because I can't afford to have a ton of work outside of school. I just can't. Yeah. I know that about myself. We should tell anybody listening to this that's like a Jimmy Con- fan or out in Nashville <laughs> or whatever. AB stands for Acton Boxborough. Yes. And it's actually, it happens to be where my kids are going to school, not yeah. in high school yet. And it's a top high school. It's a top, mm-hmm. top high school. Very, yes. very, it's not an easy school. It's an excellent high school. Yeah. And, and so uh, I, you know, we got to give, we got to obviously, kinda, we got to give kind of the administration yeah. <laughs> there a break a little bit because. Oh, well, they have right? a very a reputation to uphold. And sure. They, they and, have to have, yeah. yeah. They can't have every kid who wants to be a rock star right. saying, oh, I'm just going to go on tour. It's like, yeah. well, yeah. yeah. So at first, so they must have been, what the hell is this? They were and like, they probably gave you some not. trouble. You can't yeah. do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sophomore year, and and then w- once the, sort of my guidance counselor and I think other adults that I was close with in the building yeah. started to see that I was not functioning as a human. The thing that my parents were very careful about, and they were always very supportive of me. They never pushed me to do anything. They understood the balance of you have a career and you're starting early and you have to do this. And they were also very concerned when I was stressed and touring too much and having too much school. And they did the perfect thing in that scenario. And I, I'm so grateful for, for them in every you know capacity. But um, That's a yeah. tough balance, man, as a parent. It's, like, And they did yeah. an amazing, they're doing a great job. They're, and you graduated, they, right? I did. So, so look, right. this is something that I'm sure you've learned. Yeah. If you take what you're doing seriously and you yeah. act like a serious person when you're doing it, eventually people will take you seriously. Yeah. You came to them saying, well, I'm, I'm going and I'm got, I've got gigs. They're going to be like, okay, great kid, right? You know, yeah, you go yeah. do your gigs, but you better show up at school and do your homework. Exactly, yeah. Or you're they gonna be in, be in trouble. But That's honestly, I, you, it doesn't matter how old you are. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't take whatever you're doing seriously, no one, will take, no one will take you seriously. Yep. And sometimes you have to take it seriously for a little while or yeah. even, even a long while yeah. before people are like, oh, I guess he's really serious about yeah, this. Maybe I should up. start respecting what they're doing. Absolutely. And so it must be even harder as a 13, 14, 15-year-old to yeah. convince people, look, I'm a serious person about this. You got to just convince the grown-ups that you are. Otherwise, it, they're going to be really like, ah, oh, it's just a kid, isn't Okay, no. so did it's the music, forgetting about the Instagram, yeah. forgetting about, yeah, you, let's say you got some Bs and As and courses, yeah. you're doing it. What about the music? When you go back to the high school, is something that the administration or other teachers or other students yeah. Yeah. listen to. And it's like, wait a second. They heard wow. it and they're like, holy moly. Oh, um, right? yeah, I think. So Miss Moss, the chorus director, has been, I will forever say that she's the reason that I graduated from AB because she kept me sane. Like I had two classes of music every day. She recognized what I was doing and she, she heard the music and she was just going to do everything she could do to make sure that I was able to get through and sort of do that. Miss Moss. I don't really think they good care. Good job, yeah, Miss Moss. she's amazing. She's yeah. so good. Switching gears to music, country influence, clearly country yeah. pop rock. Definitely. In New England. Because you know Ashley Jordan, right? I do. Yeah, she's from what? Harvard. She's basically right, down the road. Harvard, right one of those from places. here. But she was one of the first people to have this modern country. Yeah, and we were like, yeah. "What are you, you know, doing up here as a country yeah. person yeah. in Massachusetts?" You guys yeah. have a lot in common in that sense. 
she competed in that competition that I did um, <laughs> the second year in a row, and that was the first time that I met her. We never run into each other. Like it's such yeah. a small town in Nashville. I haven't seen her in years, and the last time I did was at a radio thing up here. Um, it, which is the funniest thing, but she's amazing. I look up to her very much. When did you go into the studio and make your first album? Recently, um, a year ago, January, we cut the first the first record or the the EP. Um, so you didn't even have an EP when you were touring. You, no, you we were, were just... touring with two singles, basically okay. one or two singles, depending. We released the first single. Yeah, I had them on CD, uh, and they were on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon, iHeartRadio, the whole spiel, all the music sites. So that was mm-hmm. that was an interesting. You did thing. the EP, and that was recorded in Nashville. In Nashville, and in that Ocean was, was that with your band, or was that with studios? That was with. I, I got really lucky because I, I I got to sort of handpick like my favorite players in town, which is the craziest thing. I never thought they would even care or want to come. Yeah. But we had like Seth Rosh, who's on tour with Keith Urban right now, play drums. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt Utterback, who's out with Hunter Hayes, uh, play bass. He's like my favorite bass player in Nashville. It was nuts and it was so intimidating at first to be in that space but then I was like oh these guys are kind of all my buddies so it'll be okay like I'll, I'll, <laughs> I just needed to calm myself down. We cut so we cut the record in Oceanway Studios in Nashville which How long is did it take? crazy. Uh, we did the whole thing in a week. It's about time you came out with this freaking thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait it's about time is the name of the EP. That's okay. it. So four door it's about time more than enough Party Girl, that's the big one. That's right? the big one. I heard that's that the one. lead. Nowhere, single. nowhere is where I want to be. Yeah. And what you want to do? Why an EP? Why don't you want to do a full album? That's a really good question. I I wrote like a hundred songs for that project, so yeah. there were plenty of songs to to put out, but it costs a lot of money to do that, and it takes a long time to do that. And so I was like, man, I need to have a record out by the summer. If we cut 12 songs, there's no way that's going to happen. It might be next year, and you're going to be sick of the songs by the time they come out. So I was like, all right, well, let's do six. Let's just see what happens in the world with six songs and not spend so much budget on the first record. And then, you know, maybe a year, a year and a half rolls around, and then we'll talk about, you know, the release Mm -hmm. schedule of maybe going in sometime soon, like now, and then coming out with something before next summer. Are you continuing to write mm-hmm. now? There's a huge catalog. I So I just write all the time. I write by myself. I co-write a ton in Nashville, which is awesome. Um, and I just love doing that. We had like almost 100 songs before we cut the first record, and that was a year ago, January. And now I've got like 150 more. Uh, and I'm still writing like crazy for the next the next project. Um, I love the creative side of things, and I love it even more now that I live in Nashville because I can just go home and have the road be the road and have Nashville be the creative sort of space where I can just go, okay, show, we left the show on a good note, let's just leave it on the road and, and then come back into the studio and just sit down and just make music kind so of. So your focus now is is getting the EP out there and touring on the EP. Yeah. But – you worked hard to get that GPA. I did. Do you have a plan to go to, to go to school, to go to music school, or, um, or is that so something maybe you're just going to think about down the line? I applied to Belmont University in Nashville, um, which was my top school. Um, I was going to apply to Berkeley, and then I was like, I, I need to be in Nashville. So um, I got into Belmont, which is great for the songwriting program, um, but I decided not to go uh, this year because things were just too crazy. Our, our schedule was just nuts, and I was like, I can't, so... Um, school will be there. Um, I just figure I got to sort of give this thing some some time and, and effort. Um, school will be there. Yeah, yeah. And I, like I would that. love to get I, I would love to get a college education. That is definitely in my plan. But I just don't see it sort of fitting perfectly right now. So what's the next moment? Like, what are you going for here? That's a tough question because, you know, I, I sort of, it's always something different than I think. Um, so I think the next thing is going to be, uh, I hope it's going to be, some some booking changes and some uh, some some label stuff and and um, being able to do what we do on a much larger scale with the bus and with more people singing along to the shows and and more people listening to the music. Um, I mean that's the dream. The thing for me is I just want I want a tour bus so bad. I've been on so many <laughs> I've been on so many of my buddies tour buses. I'm like, dude, I just gotta. Um, I, I think that's it. So it's, it's the tour the bus. Tour bus. I think the tour bus is the thing, man. <laughs> it, the the tour bus is indicative of the success. It's not like if you get a tour bus you'll be you'll be successful and so that's <laughs> that's what it sounds like you're headed towards i i mean i that's the dream that would be a dream and, and then finally so you can like, sleep Dude, and not have to go like, to class in the morning you understand i've been on a couple buses but when i get one assigned that's like this is your bus i'm gonna be like ah oh, that's it that's it i can i can die a happy man now because i <laughs> got a bus but, but yeah i think it's a, the the school can wait thing is in, is important because there are many people that go through careers that 
change all the time. And then absolutely, what I've learned from you is that from an early age, you've learned what you wanted more than most people do. For instance, to bring it back onto myself, I didn't know what, really what I want to do with my career until until I was like, I don't know, like late twenties. Yeah, you you don't know it sometimes, and yeah. you can change the road. Uh, Chuck is still trying to figure that out. <laughs> I and Chuck, <laughs> I take you seriously. Well, thank you. <laughs> I want you. Thank to you know very that. much. Thank you very much. I appreciate. It. That's why I'm wearing sandals with socks. <laughs> one, one thing we did not talk about at, at length. Sure. Were your guitar chops? Oh, dude. Now, are you a are you a, a shredder? Are you a chord guy? I'm touring in just a trio right now. It's just me uh, on lead guitar and then bass and drums, oh. um, which is crazy. So that has been an adventure in and of itself for me. So it's just electric um, right now for you. Yeah. Well, it's I'll let you, I do some acoustic stuff. I mean, there's like three acoustic songs on the oh, okay. show. I love playing guitar, so I do a lot of lead stuff. I do do a lot of chordal stuff too. Yeah. And it's just kind of, it's been a, a huge adventure for me to just have to play everything. So yeah. it's been healthy as a guitar player. And yeah, it's been really great. Learning. Yeah, it, I mean, it definitely kept me on my toes to improve my playing to the point where I can play all of it and have to play all of it. And I get to play with a lot of people that I look up to, which is crazy, too. So I kind of just been taking it all in like a sponge and just kind of absorbing all of the notes. And uh, But yeah, so it's been good. I, I, to answer your question, though, I do do a lot of both. Right. Um, and I, lo- I love doing both, so it works out. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, man. We want to we want to hear some songs. Yeah. So uh, if it's cool, I want to play just the, the the single that we're touring with right now. This is the the title track um, to the record. It's a song called "It's About Time." Shotgun seat, man, it's three in the morning It's three in the morning And I'm staying for just another song Cause you're the one I want And the party's all just getting started Just getting started But I'm thinking that it's about time It's about time To you and I get tongue-tied It's all us and all alone, yeah, the long gone, get a dance on, feeling wrong, but it feels so right. Call me crazy, but I say, baby, we should stay a little longer and move a little closer, yeah. Cause it's about time, yeah. About time, slide your hand in mine. Feel a little ring catching on my shirt sleeve, just right. Mm, yeah. Something the G lay back and sees, yeah. Look at the stars, we ain't gonna get no sleep. All right.
Fun stuff. All right, do one more. Cool, one more. Um, this is a song called Four Door. Hope you guys like it. Tell me how will it feel if they call the song Jimmy has several gigs lined up on the East Coast in the next month or so, and you can see his entire schedule and purchase his EP at jimmyconnor.com. Go to AboveTheBasement.com, where you can join us on Patreon, sign up for our newsletter, listen and subscribe to our podcast, like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and look at all the nice pictures we post on Instagram. We are everywhere. On behalf of Ronnie and myself, thanks for listening. Tell your friends, and remember, Boston music, like its history, is unique. How would you like to join us in creating great conversations that inspire and connect? Patreon is a membership platform that provides a way for creators like us to build relationships and provide exclusive experiences to subscribers or patrons. We've been self-financed since we got off the ground in June of 2016, but in order to continue to fully invest all we can in each episode, we need your patronage. For more information, please go to patreon.com forward slash above the basement.